Hi guys, welcome back to Will Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Cable, issue number one, written by Gary Dugan with art by Phil Noto, a new series in the Dawn of X, because we didn't already have enough titles going on in this one. But this one features Kid Cable, or Young Cable, not his older counterpart that we've come to know and love over many decades of comics. No, this is the younger Cable that's come around in the last few years in uh, X-Men comics, a character I'm not too terrified be familiar with. Uh, my first introduction to him was the X-Force series that was running, ran for about 12 issues right before um, House of X and Powers of Ten um, started. Uh, that was right when I got back into comics and started reading uh, X-Men stuff again. But we've had a little bit of introduction, uh, or had a little bit of stuff to do with this character. He appeared in a couple issues of X-Men and then was featured in uh, the Fallen Angels. I'm going to call it miniseries at this point. It was an ongoing, I think, that ended up only running six issues. Um, so we've gotten to know Kid Cable a little bit in the post Hawks and Pox era, but now we are really going to delve into the, his history in, in this one and get to know the character as well as put him on a new adventure which looks really, really cool and then have a surprise ending. So all in all, I really dug this issue. Let's go ahead and dive into it and go through it as we always do here on the channel. So first off, I loved this, um, this cover here looks like a throwback uh, movie poster. I didn't know uh, that this dude in the background here. No idea what that is, but we find out here um, pretty soon. I love that the first line is just "fuck you, Wolverine." <laughs> I love it. Like I don't. I, I'm not a writer. I wouldn't know how to start uh, a kid cable comic, but that seems to be pitch perfect. It says here, "My name is Nathan and Day, Day Spring Ascani Sun." Uh, Summers, but you can call me Cable. I'm fighting my Uncle Logan in one of the first battles in the quarry. I know it seems like he um, he has me right where he wants me, uh, but watch this move. Um, he says, uh, time out. <laughs> and then uh, Wolverine says, is that a joke, bringing that human idea in here like that into our dojo? But then he stops Wolverine with his um, telekinesis here. And then lays a good old punch on him and he says... Uh, he killed one of my favorite guns, but I still got a use for it. And then dumps it onto the tops of his uh, claws, basically sheathing his claws here. And I love that you got Callisto and Gorgon, two insane characters, just sitting in the stands having a having a couple beers, watching the um, the goings on here in this like weird. Um, I don't want to call it a mutant fight club, but it kind of feels like uh, a mutant fight club. And uh, Kid Cable says, I got to sheathe those claws so I can get close, use that heavy metal skeleton against him. Let's finish this. I got a double date. And so he knocks Wolverine down, and then Silver Samurai, of all people, uh, declares uh, Cable victorious by pinning witness mutant supremacy. Again, you've got Kid Cable and Wolverine in... Uh, like a gladiator style match with Silver Samurai as the the referee with Callisto and Gorgon sitting in in the stands cheering them on. The the era of Dawn of X is weird and I absolutely love it. All right, and I love this uh, right here between Callisto and Gorgon. Callisto says, for the record, I wouldn't have bet against Old Man Cable. And she says, uh-huh, I gotta give uh, give the bottle here, Callisto. Apparently they bet um, uh, booze, which is just you know hilarious, especially since booze isn't really supposed to happen on Krakoa because um, we've seen the Marauders, uh, also written by Gary Dugan, smuggle in booze for, the, uh, for Wolverine uh, specifically. Great stuff. Uh, um, and then uh, they say here, um, it was, uh, Silver Samurai says, Hear me, mutants. A wager was made. Wolverine lost. The bargain must be honored. Uh, Logan owes Cable a marker, which is very interesting. And we don't get to know what this marker is, but I assume it's like uh, some sort of marker, just like over in the John Wick franchise, where it's like a, a favor or something that they, they can't refuse or something like that. At least that's my immediate um, guess as to, as to what it is. Um, 
And then we get um, a record here of, of what's been going on. Cable versus Wolverine. Callisto versus Jumbo Carnation. Callisto versus Fish. Callisto versus Pyro. Of course, Callisto has uh, swept everything. And then Gorgon versus Magic, where uh, uh, Gorgon or uh, Magic was disqualified. There's actually a line uh, about that over here. Um, it actually, yeah, Cable right here says, There's no cheating in the quarry, except for what Magic did. So it makes me wonder what the hell Magic actually did. And I love that the title of Cable's issue number one is just Big Guns. Of course it's Big Guns, right? So uh, Cable's about to go on his date with um, Armor and uh, Pixie there. Now he said double date. I assumed he meant um, there was another uh, gentleman accompanying him or at least, uh, you know, two pairs but apparently he's, uh, you know, the Summers like to do weird things on Kirko so he's got him a date with with two girls there but before they can go to Hanoi for uh, to, to their reservations, little kid here named Curse shows up and says, hey, my friend Fauna ran off into where the monsters are. And so Kid Cable says, all right, we'll go get them so we don't have to tell the adults. Um, now, we get a mention here um, of something that happened over in the X-Men uh, book. I think it was right here where, um, I'm sorry, it's on, it's on the, the, the next page over here, but we get the uh, kid Fauna running through and then runs into Cable and he telepathically lets them know that um, he's got the kid and then we turn the page and boom, big bad monster. And now this uh, bit up here in this little bit of narration is really important. It uh, happened in one of the previous issues of X-Men. It says a couple days back Krakoa kind of ate another island filled with monsters it's been pretty chill so far, but we're still working out the kinks. It's all good because I got a plan, and then he tells everyone to run. So uh, about that a little bit, if you haven't been reading the main X-Men title, there was, uh, like, Krakoa split in half, like, millennia ago, like, back when Apocalypse was, like, the first mutant, and that half of Krakoa, like, went down into the earth and just vanished, and then it finally came back, and it came back with a bunch of monsters, and it kind of, and also came back and merged with the other half of of Krakoa that remained um, up top. And we haven't really explored that. This is really one of the first times we've actually um, explored that. So Cable, Pixie, and uh, Fauna are going to fight off the big bad line here. Uh, Pixie gives uh, Fauna some uh, some uh, sprinkle of pixie dust. So she sees this insane, like, muppetized cartoon version of this monster that they're fighting. And, like, uh, Cable throws a, a grenade at it, but it just looks like a little, um, like, glitter ball or something. I think it's absolutely um, hilarious. This this book definitely has uh, some good humor. Uh, so Fauna, high on whatever Pixie gave her, runs into the fray. Cable has to save her again and tells Pixie to uh, uh, get her out of there. He's about to get stepped on and uh, Armor steps in to save his uh, skin and pull him into her actual armor. And then they notice that there's something stuck inside this big monster's paw. And of course, it's a pretty uh, typical retelling of the thorn in the lion's paw fable. I think it's an Aesop's fable. I'm really not sure. Um, but basically, you know, they figure if they get this thing out of this uh, this monster's paw, maybe the monster won't be so ticked off. And they are, they are pretty much right. So they hatch a plan to pull out whatever it is. Turns out it's some big ol' fancy sword sticking out of there. So, okay, this is where it starts to get really, really interesting. And, of course, as soon as Cable pulls it out, it gives him a big ol' shock. And then he starts remembering something that's going on here. And it says, uh, I hear armor, but I can't respond. I'm a million miles away in the past. I'm in armor of my own. I'm a space knight named Morn. I'm the first of my kind, a progenitor for the, uh, a new type of warrior. And I wield the light of Galador. I pursue monsters across the galaxy and I arrive on a primordial earth. A fight ends like all my others, but there are there is a bigger prey here. So that monster comes in, squishes the knight. It says the knight's journey is at an end. In his last moments, he felt fear and relief. So this sword from this um, uh, Battlestar Galactica Cylon looking dude, or it says Space Knight, which makes me think of Rom uh, Space Knight, um, has been stuck in this monster's paw for millennia. No wonder he's pissed off, right? 
And so um, Cable wakes up and talks about, um, you know, this psychic flash that he's got. And he says, I think this is supposed to happen. Uh, big guns were the old guys thing. Now uh, I always wanted a big ass sword. Of course you did. And I'm sure this will play into X of Swords, the new uh, massive X-Men uh, crossover coming up later this year. Uh, Cyclops shows up, basically tells them that um, they shouldn't have gone there, and uh, Cycl or, uh, Cable, you know, regales him with the story of what actually happened, and says, uh, and uh, Cyclops says here, I think this metal is might be too light to have come from Earth, and that's when we go into a space, some sort of space museum, where we've got these guys right here. Um, looking very much like they're part of that Space Knight troop, and sure enough, they wake up and they fly off to Earth because they have been awakened. They've been asleep for, I think it says, three millennia, or over three millennia, they have been asleep, and so they fly off to heed the call that they got sent from Cable picking up that sword. And as cool as that is, it gets a little bit better. So here we are in some sort of post-apocalyptic era with this nasty um, talking giant crab with fire coming out of it. Uh, and it's about to attack someone. It says, uh, get out of our sovereign lands. And something shoots it. And that silhouette looks familiar. Boom. It is Old Man Cable. No idea where he is or when he is, but damn, we got Old Man Cable back as well as Young Man Cable. So great fun story with um a cool adventure space adventure coming into play um and old man cable uh coming back really cool stuff i dug this first issue of cable uh, i'm very much looking forward to where this goes from here i like dogan's writing uh this is uh, one of my first introductions to phil noto art but i think i really dug it as well kind of plays into that very fun atmosphere that dogan's writing is is playing up so guys what do you think of cable issue number one let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment down below. If it's your first time here at the channel, thank you so much for watching. Maybe consider clicking that subscribe button before you click away. And until next time, we'll see all you guys at the comic shop.